Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter, here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Uh, usually, when you guys come to our YouTube channel, it's club fitting, uh, new club comparisons, club reviews. Today, it's going to be focusing on the used club selection at Second Swing, the largest in the industry, and the value of buying used clubs. Uh, you know, the selection here, again, at Second Swing, perhaps the best in the industry. And buying used clubs allows golfers to maybe not spend top dollar, but still get a great value for their stuff. So we've got a little scenario and a little game today to play. Uh, Thomas and I have a budget of $1,000 to build an entire set of 14 golf clubs, and we're gonna pick that set in about a half hour today. So uh, an interesting, fun little game to showcase that used golf club selection. Now, Thomas, we're gonna go to Les Bolstead Golf Course in Minneapolis. I know you're familiar with the course, so that's gonna maybe play a little bit of the strategy here, but what is your plan of attack for this? Well, goal to start with. My yeah. goal is to break par. Okay. So it's always usually a goal for me, even with clubs that I've never played before. So I know that golf course fairly well. I know that wedge game is important. So I'm going to definitely focus a little bit on wedges, making sure that I could get good gapping with those wedges. Yeah. Driving, I need to make sure I'm in the fairway, or at least getting myself in a good position to hit those wedge yeah. shots in. So I'll be focusing a little bit on a driver that suits my game. So driver, wedges, and then a good quality iron set that's kind of more of a player's iron set rather than a game improvement because that's kind of my game. So more traditional lofts. Yeah. So then I can apply the gapping. And then for me, putting. So yeah. last kind of 18 months I've played with an arm lock putter. So I'm hoping there's one or two in, in store here that I can find here that's going to fit the budget. Yeah. I haven't putted with a traditional putter for a while, so yeah. I definitely want to try and add that in the bag as well. Yeah, I know. You uh, actually just wrote something up for our At The Tier newsletter a couple weeks ago. Uh, so Thomas was talking about the sort of his history with arm lock putting and why uh, golfers can take advantage of that and it'll help their scores. So check that out as well. But this will be fun because uh, you're gonna, there's a lot of decision making to do here. We got to really dive in and see some great values in that in that selection over there. So we're probably going back maybe two or three generations in terms of, you know, the brands and what they've released. So this is going to be interesting. And I'm I'm really excited to do this. So Drew, based on what I just said about my goal to try and break par and say my wedge game is important, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight onto Les Ballstead. So Les Ballstead, from the tips, it's not the longest golf course, yeah. but there is a emphasis on making sure that you hit the fairway. Mm. If you hit the fairway, you can definitely make some birdies. So I know you said you don't want to embarrass yourself, but what would be a realistic goal? What kind of clubs would you think that you would be looking yeah. to try and find? Well, based on that, I don't know if I'm a good fit for this course because <laughs> I like to kind of bomb and gouge, but um, like you said, hitting a, getting a driver that gets me in the fairway is probably going to be important. Uh, and then, you know, I, based on what I know about my distance and your distance, I feel like it's going to be comparable. Or, uh, so I'm going to, again, probably focus on those wedges as well and make sure I have the right scoring clubs for, like you said, maybe some of those shorter par fours that are out there seemingly based on the knowledge that you've given me here. So for my iron set, I'm kind of looking in that player's cavity category. That's been, I've been playing for almost a decade now, so I would be used to something like that. And if I really got off with my loss there, that might uh, really throw me off. And then putter-wise, I've been playing a mallet for as long as you know I can remember. For me in my game, I think I'll have to find maybe an extra club or two to use off the tee, maybe like a driving iron or, or a hybrid to make sure I'm in the fairway. And we're going to go play nine holes, and hopefully we can, I can not embarrass myself, and then you can break par. Yeah, so keep in mind, $1,000 budget, like you said, it's not going to be brand new golf clubs. Right. Typically, we customers come in and they'll maybe have some trades. So a lot of the reason why we have these clubs is because people have traded in their equipment. Yep. Um, you Keep in mind, if we had trades, we may have about offset the price a little bit here yeah. too. But we still have a $1,000 budget. I think we can definitely put that together. And hopefully I can see you play some good golf on the golf course <laughs> and I can hopefully break par. Right. And one more thing too, the 30 day play guarantee as well. Uh, so, you know, this allows, we've talked about this with, you know, it applies to new clubs, but also used clubs. You know, if you were to purchase these clubs today, we would have 30 days to try them out. They don't work. Bring them back in for the full credit for second swing. So uh, we're kind of showcasing all these different things that maybe aren't quite as talked about on our channel, but um, all the benefits of second swing right here. So, all right, well, Thomas, 30 minutes to pick out our entire set under $1,000. Should we get after it right now? Let's do it, let's see if we can find them. All right. Uh -huh. Driver time. You're starting to drive. <laughs> This is a Titleist 915 D2. 
uh, in pretty solid condition, eight and a half degrees. And then what I like is this uh, Aldilla Rogue 70 Tour X shaft. So I know I need an extra stiff shaft with my swing speed. And I also like this multi-compound grip. So uh, I mean, this is gonna be my driver. The shaft is a little shorter than mine, but it's probably good because I need some more uh, control off the tee. So club number one, this is $179.99. So we're losing a little bit of the budget there, but uh, driver's important, right? Only this didn't have this massive jumbo grip on there. <laughs> That's the fastest five minutes ever. <laughs> Still stuck on the driver. All right, I'm gonna save myself a little bit of worries. I'm gonna go with the cheaper one. So I was stuck on the TS3 and the 917 D3. We have done some testing recently of the whole Titleist line in the last few years. Um, budget for me, with the $1,000 budget, I'm just leaning towards the 917 because it's $100 less than the TS3. I'll keep this in mind if I do keep it, keep it under a little bit, but right now TS3 is the way to go, nine and a half degree loss. I can always make a little adjustment to my more upright setting that I like as well. So right now, 917 D3 is the way to go. 800 left. Right. All right. Well, extra stiff golf shafts, always a good start for me with the fairy wood. I like my club to be kind of like an anti-left club pretty good deal. So it matches, very similar look to the, to the driver. Always like to have my driver and fairway look pretty similar. This Torex shaft, three wood. Price is only 72 bucks. This is a steal. This is gonna keep me on the budget, hopefully. Okay, driving iron time. I'm using this thing as my driving iron. I like that. I'm also passing on the fairway. Or Thomas did get a fairway. Okay. No, I'm not going to do a fairway wood. I have chosen this Titleist 818H2. It's a more compact hybrid. Uh, the Project X Evenflow Blue Shaft, 85 grams. It's a kind of a mid launching shaft. Uh, but at 19 degrees, I think it'll work as something that I can get out in the fairway, control a little bit, and then if I need to, maybe go after a longer par five or something like that in two. Hopefully this can allow me to do that. So that's, this is club number two in the bag. I'm skipping fairway because I've noticed in my rounds a lot this year, I just haven't used one. Uh, my, I guess it's not a club I would choose off the tee to keep it in play. And then really on the course, you know, it takes a 550 yard par five for me to actually use it from the fairway most of the time. So um, I'm just gonna go with the 19 degree hybrid instead. All right, I got my driving iron. Ooh. All right, so I got my driving iron here. Callaway X Forge Utility, 21 degree. This is gonna be my furry finder. So this is gonna be my 240 shot off the tee. Give myself a chance to make birdie on those shorter par fours at the golf course. Price is only 100 bucks. So keeps my budget going here. Gives me room for my irons and wedges and putter. So budget right now, 199. 72 and 105. Just a little bit under, just a little bit under 400. So I've decided that I'm going to just save my biggest uh, priced item for the end. So which would be the iron set. So I'm going to go wedges and then putter right now. Uh, so I've got 750 to work with. 179 here and then 69, uh, 99 for the H2 hybrid here. So I got about 750 to work with, and I'm thinking. I'm going to start with the wedges, go to putter, and then depending on what I have left, that'll kind of, uh, you know, help me identify the irons that I need. So I'm having a hard time right now to find some iron sets. There's so many different iron sets in the store. Not only do we have them out on the wall, we also have a whole bunch more in the vault. So 
The vault for me is where I'm gonna try and dig through a few different sets, but to find some clubs, I have to revert back to our website and then filter Minnetonka store and iron sets. So I'm gonna go through that process now. I'm gonna start by just typing in, so golf iron sets. Okay, so I'm first going to start here, get rid of left-handed, so apply filters for right-handed. I'm gonna apply my budget. So price range for me is gonna be kind of in this area here. I can't really go over $500, especially since I need to add some wedges in the putter. And then we are at Minnetonka today. So I'm gonna change that location to Minnetonka. Okay, so now I've got a few different clubs to take a look at based on my budget. This looks interesting. Ping eye blade, four through pitching wedge, stick flex, standard length. Okay, so ping eye blade. Looks like a pretty good deal. Okay, so I'm gonna try and find this set here based on my budget. This I think this is gonna be a good option for me. I'm looking at the SKU number here and I'm gonna go into the vault and see if I can find this set. All right, so the vault. So I know the ping iron sets are back here. I've got to work my way and try and find this eye blade set. This is the one. All right, found my iron set here. Ping eye blades, four through pitching wedge. 419. All right, so here's where I am with the budget. I'm at 199 plus 72 plus 105. So just a little bit under 400. These iron sets are 419. So I'm basically $800. So I gotta try and find a couple wedges and a putter still within a couple hundred dollars. This is gonna be a little challenging. So I'm gonna, I can't go crazy with my putter here. So I got my three wedges. I got the, you know, with a 50 and 54 degree for the way I play, I don't use them a lot. It's more of just a full swing shot, right? So with my 50 degree, I found a Callaway X2 over here at $30, uh, which is to me a great value. It's still in pretty solid shape. Um, and I like this grip on it too, that multi-compound. Um, I got the uh, Titleist Vokey 54 degree SM4. So a few generations old, but uh, again, uh, if I'm gonna be just using you know, a full swing on these. I like to play the same wedge from about mm, 80, 90 yards in. And speaking of that wedge, I have the TaylorMade Milled Grind High Toe. Um, you know, there's, the grooves are still pr in pretty solid shape. That's kind of what I was looking for here. And then to see it at only $90, that's why I, I chose this one. I like that high toe look. I have one in my bag, a wedge uh, with that high, high toe shape. So that's what I was looking for here. Found it with this one. So I got my wedges in place now. So budget-wise, I have, th this right here is $420. Uh, so my three wedges, and then these, the, t the driver and hybrid, 420, so I have 580 left. I need a putter and an iron set. So I'm thinking if I can use, find a putter, that's about 100. Uh, and then get an iron set in that 400 range, that'll put me just under 1,000. So that's kind of my goal for uh, the iron set and the putter. I'm, I'm worried that my putter will be a little more expensive than me. That is the head shape I'm looking for, though. What did they say I want the putter to be? $80 or $100? So first thing I'm looking at here is my lob wedge, like a 58 or 60 degree wedge. I'm thinking about my gapping with the clubs. So I know the loft on these eye blade pitching wedges is around about 46 degrees. So I'm looking at probably two wedges. So I'm trying to gap my wedges out adequately here. I'm probably gonna go with a 52 and a 58 to have like six degree apart. Just to kind of help me with this budget, I've played with three or four wedges in my bag, but today I'm gonna go with three. So I have loved the last couple of years using the Callaway PM Grind. So I've found myself here, the U Mac Daddy PM Grind here 58. Price is right at $80. So I think this is gonna be my wedge here for around the green and within, within 90 yards. But now I'm looking for a gap wedge. So something that's got 52 degrees of loft on it. The challenge has been with, uh, with COVID this year is the 52, the 50 degree wedges, they get sold out the fastest in our store. So I'm gonna try and find something here that may be a couple of generations older, just to kind of help me, help me out with my gapping purposes. 
This is gonna be a club that I'm gonna probably hit between about 100 and 120 yards on the course. Right, got something here. Got a couple of gap wedges here actually. Let's go with this one here. So I've got Cleveland. This is a 2012 um, 588 Chrome. It's actually still in pretty good shape. The grooves are pretty good, so that's important to me. It's going to help with my gapping. Things are only $39. This is going to help me. Essentially, I'm going to have about $100 left in my, in my budget. So I've got to double check my pricing to see what I've got left to spend on the putter. Well, if you make one, then that's probably the the deal, right? This one might be a winner. Sold. So I mentioned that I've been putting with an arm lock putter. This putter is just a little bit shorter than an arm lock putter, but within the budget that I've got, I can still hold it kind of where I want to with regards to an arm lock putter. It's got a little more loft on it, so it allows me to forward press that putter. This would be a good option. I like this putter a lot. So, scanning everything in. So I've got 72 for the fairway wood, 200 for the driver, utility hybrids 106, the putter's 99, iBlade iron set's 420, the Cleveland gap wedge is 40, and the Mac Daddy wedge is 80, and uh-oh, I am over by $18, $19. So I gotta think about this one. So I think I can maybe get a generation older than the 917 D3. Maybe like a 915 wood would actually match this, this fairy wood. So let's see if I can find something here that can replace and save me a couple of dollars. All right, found it. Let's just double check the price on this and see where we're at. $998.93, just under. <laughs> Whichever one's got the better shaft is the one I'm gonna pick. This should put me under the budget, I believe. I'm gonna... So I've been, I was told I was running short on time. So I was thinking about this putter. This is a tailor-made Ardmore 2. Little bit beat up, but I like the shape and I like that sight line, right? You got those white uh, sight lines both in the middle and then kind of on that flange to the back. Um, so I'm gonna go with this putter, that's $87. Uh, and then I have this iron set here. This is a Mizuno MP59 in that player's cavity category. If you've seen our videos, you know how much I played Mizunos in the past, love the feel. Um, this is a stiff shaft, so not quite maybe what I need in terms of heavy, um, the heavy shaft and also the flex. I maybe need something a little stiffer, but uh, I think I'll have some confidence looking down at these, knowing that they're Mizuno irons and they'll, they'll feel really well. So uh, these are, this is what I got. I gotta find the, the tag in here, here we go. Ooh. I was a little off actually, but I'm under the budget. Look at that. We're at the driving range. We've got a, a few minutes here to warm up, get loose and get used to the clubs. Thomas, do you feel any differently about uh, your goal of breaking par here? Well, there is a little bit of wind here. So yeah. that definitely brings that element and play a little bit. So we might have hit a few knockdown shots here and yeah. maybe think my way around the course just a little bit better, but I still feel pretty confident. I feel pretty, pretty, pretty confident about breaking par. Now, what about the look of your clubs compared to something, like these clubs that you have here, your, your budget set compared to your gamers? Is that gonna throw you off? Are you, I know you are big on appearance of the clubs, but are you gonna be thrown off by that at all or no? Yeah, so 60 degree, well, 58 degree wedge, I have a PM grind, so I basically got the same wedge as I got. Okay. My putter, it's kind of a makeshift arm lock putter, so <laughs> I, I like putting with an arm lock putter, so it's very similar. And then my irons are very, very similar to the traditional lofts that I'm playing right now as well. Okay. So I try to keep that as consistent as I possibly could so I could trust my numbers. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I know. I think my irons are, the ones I have in my set here, a little weaker than my, uh, the one in my, my gamers. So uh, those might be a little different. Hopefully I have to make a bit of adjustment there. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited because 
you know, I've, some of these, like the three iron in this set has not been hit. You know, this is a <laughs> Mizuno set that somebody, you know, bagged for, or probably used for a few years and just didn't touch the three iron. So I kind of want to hit it just because it looks so good. But um, yeah, I'm excited. And we're going to be teeing off here shortly. And I, uh, I have some high hopes, but I've had that before in golf. So yeah. we'll see. Well, let's get a chance to get loose, hit a few shots, and then we'll take it to the tee. Perfect. All right, we're on the first tee, Thomas, of Les Bolstad Golf Course. We're playing the front nine. The first hole is a par four, 399 yards. In total, the front nine is going to play just under 3,000 yards. We've got all our clubs from our set here. Um, we'll quickly review those, and then we'll maybe talk about approach to the first hole here. But I know in my bag, I think both of our bags actually, we got a Titleist 915D2 driver. Um, and then I went down, actually, didn't, you, no fair I would. I just went to hybrid, so 818H1 hybrid. And then uh, my iron set is Mizuno MP59, so a little bit of an older model, but I love that player's cavity category. And then, of course, Mizuno feel. I've talked about that before, and I've played Mizunos in the past, so that's what I went for there. Wedges, I went for my 50, 54, and 58 gapping, which is what I'm used to in my gamer bag. Callaway X Tour in the 50, uh, SM4 Vokey in the 54, and then TaylorMade Mill Grind High Toe 58. And then uh, my putter is a TaylorMade Ardmore 3. Okay. So that's the bag there. And I got, again, a mix of different brands in there. So uh, I'm excited to see what uh, comes of it here. Yeah, so I actually went with the D3. So I like oh, D3, the okay. D3 just a little bit because a little bit more compact yeah. head, technically a little bit lower spinning club head yeah. as well. Uh, but a 9.5 D3. I went with the 70S golf shaft. I think you might have taken the one that had the extra stiff golf shaft. I did. But so it's okay. So <laughs> I can... I don't need to have play. This is going to make up for it because it is a lower spinning, more lower torque golf shaft, the okay. Diamanta whiteboard shaft. Uh, I also went with the 915 FD 3 wood. Might okay. get a chance to hit that out here a couple of times depending on the hole and, and the wind today. Yeah. Because um, I like to, usually like to have my driver and ferry wood kind of matching essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, looking very similar. Then I went with the Callaway UT, the utility 21 degree. Okay. Driving iron, like something that's going to maybe get me out about 240 usually. Yep. Uh, and then I did the Ping Eye Blades four through pitching wedge. Okay. I happen to have a black dot, black dot as well, so that works out for me because I am a standard lie player yeah. as well, so that worked out really well. Cleveland uh, 52 degree wedge. Uh, I think it's the, it might have been the CG 15 or okay. something very similar. I was looking for gapping yeah, and right. a wedge that had good grooves on it still. Yep. And then I did the PM Grind 58. So I went with a 46 degree with the um, the ping irons okay. and then 52, 58. So I had gotcha. about a six degree gap between each okay. wedge here. And then O-Works uh, putter that is about 38 inches long. So it's a little shorter than a traditional arm lock, but I found a way to be able to kind of manipulate to that it. to feel like felt yeah. to me there too. Yeah, so. I mean, we the, the thing is we kind of know our fitting specs, right? So I think my irons are going to be a little shorter. They don't have that upright lie angle that I was fit for, so that might be a little bit of an adjustment for me. But yep. um, for the sake of the nine holes here, I'm hoping uh, I can survive, right? Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll do well. All right, so yep. first hole here. It's yep, a, first hole. Yep. Kind of a, not a short par four, but it's a par four. Um, we both got driver here. Now, I was I was thinking hybrid, <laughs> but then the wind, we kind of kind of wind into our face here. So I'm like, you know what? I got to keep it, make sure I can have a scoring club in, right? And you also saw that I had driver in my I hand. I did, I did. <laughs> a little gamesmanship from Thomas there. Yeah, so... I usually like to hit driver on a lot of holes. I feel pretty comfortable hitting driver fairly straight. I know there's a tree out there about 280, but there is a wind probably 10, 15 miles an hour into us, yeah. so I don't think I could reach that driver. I'm gonna try and hit a little fade and kind of curve it into the fairway. Okay, well, let's yeah. see it. All right, sounds good. That should be pretty good. All right. It's a little high fade over the corner. Very nice. Hey, right, just kind of went over the corner there. Cut the corner a little bit. Get down, bowl. Down, 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 down. Didn't cut. We'll make uh, it work. Hopefully we can find it. Some long rough over there. We'll find that one, right? Yep, okay. All right, here we go. A little bit through the fairway, but uh, okay, we, we got, got it here. It. We got it right here. It's like you're stuck behind a tree, though. That's up and over, though. I got, I got a generous lie in here. All right, I'll shoot the distance for you. So you got 100 yards exactly from my angle. Pretty close to about 100. All right, it's okay. Just short. Just short? 
Good shot out of the rough. Is it? Ooh, I launched it. All right, about 25 feet here for birdie. All right, just misread it a little bit. That's in for a par. Par. Didn't take you long to get a lead on me. Slip by. We got a second hole here, par three. We got the official yardage at 178. Wind is kind of into us and from the right. I'm going to hit a six iron, knowing that A, I think these clubs are a little uh, weaker lofted than my iron, so I'll have to dial back a little bit. But also I think this wind is gonna play quite a bit of a factor here. So I'm gonna take a six iron and uh, hopefully, you know, on the green and two putt for par or perhaps a birdie. So I'm gonna hit a shot very similar to what you just said, like a little punch six okay. iron to keep it out of the wind. Good shot. Just caught a piece of it. It's a good shot. Yep. Oh, the wind didn't touch that cut. Right distance. Sit, sit, sit. Good speed. Let alone. Little bit of chicken left on that ball. Oh, yeah. A couple tap in pars, that doesn't hurt. Always good to kind of limit the damage into the wind. That's two bogeys in a row for me, not a great start. Thomas is even par, uh, as we should expect. Dog leg left, par four here. Thomas has said that he's gonna try and cut the corner, go over the trees. I might be tempted to do the same. So I've got the driver here, um, try and cut the corner and give ourselves a good birdie chance here. All right, he likes it. Perfect. He likes it. Nice drive. That is high. Yeah, a little spinny. See the spin on that might get up a little bit. 3,500, pretty yeah. good. This is an eight and a half degree driver too. Yep. That ball speed over 170 though. So we've got 108 yards. We're into the wind. I'm gonna take a 50 degree, which is usually about 125 yard shot. Hopefully if I can hit the right distance, the wind will knock it down just enough for me. Go a little bit. Yeah, it's about pin high, probably 12-ish feet to the right of the hole. So I'll take that. All right, so I got 77 yards. Try to hit like like a little nine o'clock, 58 here, and keep it under the wind a little bit. Sit. Mm. Oh, good roll. Three tapping pars. Yeah, I almost lost the speed. All right, the fourth hole. We got a par four, about what, 360, a little bit uphill. There's a fairway bunker out there that's about 300 to get to, roughly. Thomas is going to rip driver. Uh, I've got my, uh, my hybrid here, 19 degree hybrid that I'm going to try and hit just out in the fairway, hopefully uh, have a chance to attack the hole. I think that's a good smart play. I like hitting driver. I think the bunker's about 320, so I'm going to want to just get just short of it. Downwind, I want to take advantage of this hole, try and make Brody. I like it. Yep. Looks pretty good. 
might sneak out into the rough. Might be but just in the right rough. So you're kind of right the one. straight of it, right? 315. Bird. All right. What Here's club are you hitting? Uh, it's a three hybrid. Eh, leaking a little right. Caught that little low on the face, so it's going to spin a tad. 130 yards. I'm on a bit of an upslope here, but we're quite downwind. I'm going to hit the same club as last time, 50 degree wedge. I'm thinking the wind will ride it up and uh, get up to the green. Sit. All right, we're right of the pin. It looks like a little bit past the hole, but I'll take it. I think it's on the green, so. Well, I left myself a little delicate shot. I knew I was going to do that from the tee, so I sucked it up, hit driver, got 48 yards to the flag. So need to hit a little, little high flop here that lands on the front of the green that releases out to the hole. Just got there. All right. Do it. Oh, sit down. I was worried about that. There it is. One. One under. Oof. Little three jack. Uh, it was a little downhill pot, that first one. All right, fifth hole, par three. Officially 167, I think we've measured at about 160 or 161. Back into the wind, I need to get back into the uh, par category here. So I got, got a six iron, not gonna swing full. I think that's a little too deep, but the wind into us trying to knock something down and hopefully give us a chance to get par. Now yeah, that's a good shot. Thanks. Really good shot. That was a pretty tasty shot. Great yeah, shot. I'll take that. Very, very nice. Pulled it. Ooh, come back right. Oof. Oof. Ah, it's a little too hard, it's a little too hard. This is when Thomas Campbell licks his chops. This is what? This is when Thomas Campbell licks his chops, drivable par fours. I think I might have to do the same. Bring out the, drivable, the driver for the drivable par four. All right, a short dog leg par four here for the sixth hole. I think we're about 320 to 325 to the hole. The smart play probably would be to hit an iron out in the fairway and then go at the green with a little short wedge shot. Thomas and I are both going to rip a driver and see if we can uh, maybe get an eagle put out of this, but uh, we'll see how this goes. This is, these are the type of holes that I think Thomas said, this is where Thomas licks his chops. So uh, let's get after it here. Uh -oh. Couple, couple, couple. That'll be the interesting. Tree should help you out a little bit. So what I got to do is I got to keep it low enough to keep stay under the tree. I'm gonna take the pitching wedge and hit a little punch underneath. Hopefully, it kind of rolls up on or near the green. There is a bunker in front of the green. I gotta be aware of. So a punch might not be the best play, but it's. The only option I got right now. That's, I think it's in the bunker. Clip that branch. Roll out. All right.
All right, good shot. Right on line. Right in the heart. Oof. All right, par. So one through six. A little disappointed I didn't make birdie there, though. Seventh hole is a par five dog leg right, as you can see, and there's a pond there on the right that, you know, if we hit it solid, um, shouldn't be a problem. There is a bit of wind into us here, though, so you never really know. Uh, but uh, last time I tried to hit a cut with the driver, it didn't exactly cut, and uh, I'm gonna have to do that here. So uh, we, you know, put a ball in the fairway out there somewhere in a good spot, and birdie is real possibility on a rather short par five here. How's just that? a little bit too much of a cut. Nice shot. That is perfect. There we go. Yeah. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you hit a cut. 4,700 spin. <laughs> So it'll be uh, right of the green. Hopefully it's not too far. I kind of flushed that, so. Sit, sit. Sit a little bit. Fast down there. Get there. Speaking of, good putt. Oh, stressing over these par putts. Okay, the eighth hole, par three, playing 188 yards. We're downwind today, and we got a bunker to deal with front and left, greenside bunker there. So uh, I have the seven iron. Um, I'm going to try and play it about mm, 175 to 180 yards and hope the wind kind of carries it just enough on the green. Oh, hang on. That's it. That could be interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Just a little long left, maybe. Get there, get there. That's the second time. Good line. I'm either blowing it five feet past or it's six inches short, dead in the heart. Buried it. Whew, there it is. A little bit of breathing room on the last hole. A putter, well, breathing room, yeah. I'm gonna do a little long drive contest here on the ninth hole. Got, what is it, 480 yard par five. It's playing, I believe it's downwind, or downwind. kind of off the right and downwind. So we're gonna do a little long drive contest here. And also I'd like to make a birdie uh, today because that would that'd be nice for the viewers. So. Oh my. Oh, that is a out little, there. I don't think it's in the fairway though. Oh, uh, maybe it is. That rolled the wind pretty nicely. All right, a little spinny. Tee it high, let it fly. Hold the fairway. That is gonna be close, isn't it? I think it's drifting to the rough. It's further than me, that's for sure. 323. Very nice. Oh, I spun that 3,500 yeah, too. Yeah, a little spinny. Dang. Both of those are a little spinny. Well, let's find out, see who's in the fairway. I feel like yours is a little left of mine. Yeah, I'm hitting a wedge. I'm gonna get it up in the air and let it, the wind kind of take it. I don't want to go past the flag here, so long is no good. So I'm gonna play a little bit more conservative to ensure that I do happen to meet my challenge.
Yeah, that's a good shot. Thank you. I also have pitching wedge, 150 yards. I'm gonna be a little more aggressive. Well, Thomas was aggressive if he was, I mean, he was playing for short of the hole and it, it looks like it's a little short of the hole, but I think a full swing here probably gets us maybe past the hole, so I'm gonna take a little off. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's the right number. It's all right. Back fringe? Back fringe. Could be worse. Mm. Well, three under. Three under. Nice putt, good way to finish. Yeah, finally got the birdie. All right, Thomas, we've played our nine holes. Um, you know, you put up a solid score there. That's a 32, three under par on that front nine. Um, and I think you even maybe were a little upset a couple times and then maybe left a couple out there, but that's that's just Thomas the perfectionist here. So uh, I think I left a few out there with the short game, but um, overall impressions first, but then we'll kind of get into maybe what we would change. What did you think about the clubs you put together and how they worked on the course? So for the particular course, uh, I thought that I put together pretty well. I knew I was going to have a lot of probably like 40 to 80 yard shots, knowing this course is a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. The wind made it a little bit more tricky, so it changed the course a little bit. The par yeah. threes were, I thought, playing really hard today. Yeah. So I was happy that I had a club that I knew what it was going to do. So by playing a more blade, a more workable golf club, yeah. I was very happy that I went that route as opposed to maybe a club that might go a little further, maybe it'll be a little harder for me to control. Mm -hmm. So that, that was what I definitely kind of noticed. Um, what I might change, probably two things, what, what I would probably change. Driver, yeah, it, I was hitting it okay. But once again, me being a perfectionist, when I looked at those TrackMan numbers, I noticed the spin rate was yeah. kind of a little on the higher side. I usually play a nine degree driver. It was a nine and a half. It was still the 915 driver, so it's about three or four year, yeah. years old now. Uh, actually, five or six years old, <laughs> old now. Um, time goes fast. <laughs> so I would be seeking for a little bit lower spinning driver, um, maybe a little bit less loft. Yeah. What I, one thing I kind of noticed there. And then the golf shaft was actually pretty good. That was that Diamana 70S yeah. shaft. It felt like it was the torque was very low compared to a more extra stiff golf shaft. So I thought the shaft felt pretty good. But for me, probably a driver that spins a little bit less and have maybe a little bit less loft on it, get me a little bit more distance. Now right. I hit it pretty good, but that last one I hit was just a little bit spinny. Yeah. The wind helped to get it to go about 315, but once again, me kind of being yeah. perfectionist there as well. Uh, and then putter, it was a good makeshift arm lock putter, but I the lie angle on it, I would really want to get checked out. It felt like yeah. the lie angle was sitting, like the heel was kind of sitting yeah. up in the air and the toe was down. We didn't have time to kind of get any of that taken care of with regards to the fitting concept or anything like that. Yeah. But I would have definitely made an adjustment to the lion goal, especially sure. it's important because use clubs, you don't know what you're going to get. Right. So it's important to assess what the lion goal on, on clubs are, whether that be irons, whether that be a putter, your wedges. So that's one thing I did notice is that it just felt a little bit off. Yeah. That's something that in this type of game or scenario that we put together here is, you know, we had a half hour to get our set together. That's not going to be enough time, you know, and a normal situation when you go into a second swing store, you can talk to one of our experts and get your line goal figured out, uh, get your loft figured out, all that gapping uh, figured out for your game. So in this, in this situation, totally understandable, right, that you know you didn't have the putter quite matched up with maybe a standard arm lock uh, putter there, but we didn't get fit for any of these clubs. You know, a fitting is free with any purchase at second swing. And you know, one thing I know you want to touch on is the grips that you had on your clubs. That this is something that would be easily switched out at second swing is you had all kinds of different grips to deal with and that changes the feel in your hands quite a bit. It does. So because I'm going to be returning these to the store after we're done, I did not get the grips taken care of. Right. But I had six different grips in my set here. Starting with the driver, I had the Tor Wrap mid-size grip. So a little tackier feel, mid-size yeah. grip. By the way, I do not use a mid-size grip, so that yeah. felt where like I really had to work hard to get the ball to kind of turn over. Midsize, C, uh, MCC plus four midsize, so a little extra taper down the bottom on, on the three wood. 
And then with the irons, I had a standard size grip, so that felt a little bit more comfortable, but once again, a different kind of feel. Yeah. Um, another mid-size Z-grip and multi-compound standard. So there was six different grips. And one of the things at Second Swing that we can do to take care of you is to get all the grips consistent all the way through your bag. Yeah. So I think that's very, very important that you play the same grips on every single club all the way through from yeah. your driver through to your sand wedge or lob wedge just for consistency purposes. Right, yeah, that's yeah. just gonna keep, like you said, you know, that does change a little bit of how uh, maybe you turn the ball over a little bit, right? I will say though, you know, the performance on the course, there was a little bit of adjustment, of course, I think with both of us with maybe line goals or maybe how the club felt. Uh, for me, I think the irons were just a little shorter, so I kind of had to uh, keep that in mind as well than my standard irons, but um, I was, you know, pleasantly surprised. You know, I think it felt like a lot of my strokes were just three putting and, uh, you know, that chip on the first hole. But, um, you know, I think you mentioned too that you had some really good wedge shots with, you know, that 58 degree, or I believe that's what it yep. was. Yep. Um, so that, you know, I think the one on the fourth hole was really nice up that hill. Yeah, so I play a 60 degree PM grind. So I knew I needed to get something that I'm comfortable with. I couldn't find a 60 degree in our store, but I went with a 58 to help with my gapping, going from 46 to 52 to yep. 58. But it looked very similar if we looked down to it. I was already pretty, very comfortable with it. I think I used it four or five times in those nine holes. All of them were kind of between that 40 and 80 yard wedge yeah. shot, which I knew I was gonna get on the, on the shorter par fours out here. You're right, hole four was a great shot. I had a little delicate little shot. I presented myself the challenge by hitting driver on that hole, but I knew that I could trust this guy. So that was the important mm -hmm. thing for, for me there as well. For me, I think you know the, the strokes I left out there seemed to be more of a short game deal, I think. And then a couple times my driver was a little wayward, which is just kind of the way I play. I, uh, driving accuracy is not my strength. Uh, but I think the one big uh, miss I think with that I had in my strategy was it didn't have maybe a 21 or 22 degree club. Um, that, you know, like uh, on that seventh hole, that second shot on the par five, kind of had to half swing a hybrid there. That's a 19 degree hybrid. I had 220 into the wind. I think a full swing would have been a little too far. So I had to hit a little half swing there and I kind of went off to the right and had a tough up and down. So that is the big one to me. Otherwise, I think the strokes I left out there more my human error. You know, I, I really like the driver, really. Um, you know, there was a little bit of extra spin that I'm not used to but at the eight and a half degrees and something I can get for $179. Uh, that was something that I really liked and it felt really solid. And that shaft at El Dilla Rogue, um, 70 grand was really nice for me too. But yeah, we put together sets for less than $1,000. And I mean, to some a thousand might seem like a lot of money, um, but you know, a brand new iron set nowadays can be 12 to $1,500. So um, we kind of put together a set here and these are clubs from anywhere from two to five or a little bit maybe older than that years old and you just shot three under you know on the front nine here and who knows what we would have done on the back nine uh, so and maybe I would have you know brought it back to par I, I, that's wishful thinking of course for someone <laughs> like me but um, this was uh, I, I'm pretty impressed you know buying used clubs is a popular thing especially in golf now and we've, we've learned that second swing buying buying used to get that good value and we did we showed it today these clubs can still perform they can still keep up and they can still give you a good score yeah i think it really depends on the player so you know being a better player the clubs generally are a little bit more expensive i'm working i'm looking for a more workable golf club yeah generally those clubs are going to be a little bit pricier so that's why i had a, maybe a little bit of a challenge to try and keep myself under a thousand dollars knowing the clubs that i play yeah they're they're fairly fairly expensive but there are some great value clubs out there i can think yeah. of Club set of maybe one, two years old, for example, Titleist AP1 set, the yep. player that was looking for a little bit more forgiveness, you can get an iron set like that for less than $500. Mm -hmm. And there's some great value clubs out there for those players, beginners especially, and players that need maybe a little bit more assistance yep. with clubs there as well. So keep that in mind. Yes, golf clubs can get expensive. It can get a little bit intimidating at times, but there are great options out there for everyone. Yeah, which, you know, there's no better place to go than Second Swing and talk to uh, one of our experts at our stores get you dialed in no matter the skill, no matter the experience level, we can help you out and get you into a set that will fit your swing.